Hello everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up my January books. I had a weird month. It started off slow. I only wanted to read short books and I think it ended up fine at the end but I did feel a little stuck in there because of some books and because of just life stuff, work stuff. A lot of short books to talk about and I love short books as you know. I think that'll be a point of contention and discussion in this video for sure because um, I read a really really long book that I have thoughts about. So let's start with my first book that I finished in January and it's one that went over from December and that is Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I really enjoyed this honestly overall. I think I think I ended up giving it three and a half stars. It was a great pick-me-up. It was humorous in a way that I didn't know if I was going to get on with. I think that's one thing about me reading romance is that sometimes I don't like the humor in the book or I don't connect with the humor in the book. Um, and I think Talia Hibbert's humor does connect with me so I really do enjoy banter and relationships that make it funny. Chloe Brown is chronically ill and has just days when she can't do very much because of the pain that she is in. She has like a near-death experience and decides she's going to take it upon herself to live a new life and so she has a list of things that she wants to accomplish. This is like a trope that I really enjoy overall and of course things ensue from there. I would read the next one in the series. Definitely it's not like a life-changing read for me but it's definitely a fun read for me. The next thing that I read after that was This Is Your Time by Ruby Bridges. This is a really short children's nonfiction book and it is written by Ruby Bridges for the young peacemakers of the world so it's directly written for children. If you have a child in your life I really recommend this book. This is a book that I recommend you buy for them. It talks about kind of Ruby Bridges' own story in the sense of like what she goes to schools and talks about, like her experience being one of the first black children to go to school after Brown v. Board, having to be taken there by National Guards, you know, what happened to her father who was a veteran and went to war, he lost his job and things like that, and then just like the perseverance of Ruby Bridges through all of this, and then even to this day how she is still telling her story to children and to inspire them, for them to be peacemakers and change society. I listened to it while I read it and I also would recommend the audiobook. There's wonderful photography in the book as well and it compares 1960s civil rights its history to now. So there's like a lot of George Floyd protests photographs that are in there as well to compare how like the fight isn't done and how kids of today will have an impact in our future as well. Definitely loved it, definitely recommend it, five stars, just lovely. The next book I read was kind of a dud and I'm really disappointed because so many people loved it. I did not really like Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I gave it two stars. I thought it was okay. There were moments that I really enjoyed and then there were other moments that I just wanted this book to end. I think what came down for me in this book is that the main character does not really change as a person. He does not really have any character development. He is kind of accepting and taking in all of these things that are happening to him and nothing really changes in the whole book. I read a lot of books where I feel like the main character is marginalized and is like up against a big bigger system that they can't really change and that is understandable but I think other books the main characters at least think and analyze why what is happening is wrong you know the things that they would want to change and even though maybe the situation doesn't change the characters ideas about life do change in the story and this one I did not feel like the main character changed at all there are just so many times in this book where we focus so much more on the sights the descriptions of the things that we are seeing then um, on the actual like emotional development of the characters and their relationships with each other like this guy is surrounded by just horrible people all around even the ones that seem okay are kind of horrible yeah I hated Miller there are some just moments in this book where there's like questionable things happening having to do with consent that I also thought were kind of I don't know like I don't know how to feel about them and I know that they are realistic but when you compare this book to say like Luster which is one that I read really recently and I feel like deals with some some of the same topics about like a main character who's a little bit stuck and a little bit not in a good emotional space I still felt like the main character in Luster changed and developed more than the main character in real life did. I also hated the dialogue in this book. I thought that the dialogue in this book was kind of cringy. A lot of the times they would say something and then the next person would ask 
basically the same question and then the same thing would be said again and it just felt like a very circular and boring dialogue experience i like dialogue a lot because i feel like dialogue moves the story along and makes it feel like it's at a faster clip i felt like this for this book it was kind of just boring dialogue and dialogue that didn't really elevate the story or change it or make it move in any way i think that's mostly my thoughts on this i will say it was interesting to read a story about a black man who is studying science how he ended up where he was some of the comments are really interesting when you're in this kind of situation your work is your life like your lab work is your life and i like those conversations as well but i think i just hated all of the secondary characters and i didn't feel like the main character was compelling enough for me to love this book two stars i'm kind of sad about it because so many of you have liked this book and I thought that it was just okay. All right, the next book that I read after that was Before the Ever After by Jacqueline Woodson. I listened to this one as I was reading. It's in um, a novel in verse. It follows a father who has had CTE problems uh, after playing professional football, and it's his son kind of noticing these changes in his father. Obviously, he loves his father, and his father loves him, but there are just moments where he forgets even what's happening or lashes out at his son. It's a lovely look into the main character's friend group, too, and I really enjoyed that, just like, 4, 11, 12 year old boys just hanging out and being together. So I did enjoy those aspects of it. I think this didn't emotionally hit me in the end like I expected it to, like, like most times Jacqueline Woodson books do for me. And that's why I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. The one that I read after that was one that I really did love and that was The Undocumented Americans by Carla Cornejo Villavicencio. And this is a bunch of short essays. The author uh, interviews and meets with and hangs out with different undocumented Americans and that she has come across and this focuses on a, a large variety of people like day laborers, the people who went um, after 9-11 to ground zero and helped clean up who were undocumented, it looks into sanctuary seekers who just are in churches, it looks into kids of sanctuary seekers and their experience with it, how people try to treat health issues when you can't get insurance because you're undocumented even though you can pay for it you're just not allowed to get it the water crisis in flint and how that affected latinx people that lived in flint what i love so much about this is how she writes their stories they are very impactful emotionally they feel very genuine you can tell she really got to know these people i at times wanted them to be longer just so i could get to know them even more this is a really short book and it looks into like seven different areas i especially love the last essay which focuses more on her own father um she herself like says i have daddy issues and whatever and i think this is so true i think i mean this is like an experience for a lot of daughters with fathers but i think especially in latinx communities like my relationship with my father is on another level um and the way she talks about her father in this one i connected so much to my father she mostly talks in that essay about like how our fathers get older and how will they take care of themselves talking about like how many latinx people have put in work into this country and have not ever really seen anything back definitely a sad book definitely one that made me tear up a little bit especially that last essay but one that i would definitely recommend there were so many things about this that i didn't know about and it just taught me a lot i gave this one four stars the next book that i read after that was kind of a weird one and one that i didn't know how i felt about it as i was reading it and that is the book of atlantis black by betsy bonner this is a true crime look um but it really it feels more like a creative exercise of the author looking into her sister her sister went to missing in 2008 and then it's her trying to discover more information about her sister her sister took on this identity of atlantis black so she's trying to learn more about like who she spent her time with in the final days of her life and final months of her life she ended up in mexico and then trying to deal with like mexican authorities to get her body back to identify her body and to figure out if like there was any foul play involved as well as the author looking into her own family history when it comes to mental illness trauma abuse and discontent in her family i like this book especially when it talked about like the family history and how that family history affects their life now it seems to me like the author feels herself different than her mother her father and her sister who have all dealt with issues in their life and is a little bit more stable when it comes to understanding what's happening in her family at the end of the day there's not a lot of answers in this book if you're coming to this to like find a true crime account like 
what happened, who did it, you know, like what was their motive. That's not what this book is about. It's more of a, an investigation into her sister and especially thinking about her sister's mental health. There were a lot of like suspicious characters in this book too. There are moments where the author is kind of like cat and mouse trying to figure out who is running her sister's life basically. Yeah, intriguing enough that I wanted to know the end and how she wrapped this up, but not in the way that like she found out the truth. I think I ended up settling on three stars for this one. Interesting and different and weird and eerie, but I uh, something I think I would pass on. The next book I read after that was my longest book of the month and the one that I've been reading like longest I started at the beginning of the month and that was Five Days at Memorial by Sherry Fink. This is a book that I've been talking about wanting to read for a while now. I love reading books about Katrina and New Orleans in general. I mostly listened to this and I also read it on ebook. I want to say up first that like the audiobook and the ebook were not the same and there were moments in time when like the ebook had less information than the audiobook the audiobook would go on and on and then you'd realize oh we're still on the same paragraph we haven't moved on to the next sentence and i don't know what made that happen i don't understand the edits or if they're like different versions or how that happened but that really messed with my experience of it like is this important information and that's why it's in the audiobook or it's been taken away because it's actually not that important and it's extraneous in the ebook version i think that's mostly my thing with this book i think that there is so much detail in this book that is unnecessary that is not helpful to the reader especially as like a book that wants to move narratively i don't think of this book did that well. I wish it had more of a focus. And here's where I think that it should focus. It should either be about the victims and the people that were found at Memorial that died under suspicious circumstances that, you know, had to be investigated. That could be one because then you could focus on their lives and the family response to that. That could have been an interesting book. We kind of learned some of that, but I really couldn't keep them straight with the other threats in the book so you could also focus this just on looking into Anna Poe and the nurses that were indicted and you know went through a grand jury experience that could have been interesting as well and I think that's mostly what this book is about like we did learn a lot about the history of Anna Poe and like her family history how she got into medicine and what she was thinking about in those five days when she was at Memorial kind of in charge at the end of the day this part of the book also failed for me because I did not get a clear sense of why they did what they did considering like it had been five days and mostly everyone was out by that point. Rescue was imminent for all. All that needed to happen was for them to wait a little bit longer. These people were going to be in pain a little bit longer but they would be alive and also their families and they never consented to them basically being killed. So Mm, I still don't understand that second part, <laughs> you know, focusing just on Anna Poe and the nurses. And then the third thing that this book could have focused on was the response in this disaster situation to other disaster situations that have happened in this country, comparing the disaster responses of different places and how different people in charge reacted, what different emergency plans were created in different areas. The book leaned on this towards the end of the book, it talked about like Sandy and um, it also talked about like responses during epidemics and like triaging in those situations so it could have just talked about that too but what, what happened is this talked about all three of those things and then a bunch of other things and then added like little sentences that had nothing to do with the narrative flow of the story that just made it really muddled for me at the same time the story is fascinating at the same time I learned so much about what it was like to be on the ground during those five days what the experience and the feelings were like of the people who were taking refuge in the hospital you know like how, what the rescue efforts were like as well the ideas of like who gets to be saved and who doesn't get to be saved those conversations were really fascinating to me so this book had good this book had not so good and I ended up giving it three stars. All right, the next book that I finished after that was another shorter one, and that is Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex. This is by Angela Chen. This book focuses on asexuality, as you can tell. In the different chapters, Chen focuses on different aspects of society and how asexuality converges with different identities, and I found that really fascinating, thinking about race, thinking about gender, disability, and how disability and asexuality converge, and at the same time, why there's been so much pushback about can disabled people be asexual, can asexual people be disabled. The conversations that she has here and that the people that she interviews are really fascinating to learn about. She also interviews 
interjects a lot of memoir aspects into this book about her own experience learning about her asexuality how she talks to her partner about it how over time she has gotten to understand her sexuality i definitely would recommend it as like an insightful look into what it is actually like to be asexual it dispels a lot of myths it made me think more complexly about like how this fits into the spectrum of sexuality and how like if you're asexual it doesn't mean you're like at the far end like you could be more towards the middle where you can partake in sexual activity as well definitely made me think a lot made me think about myself and i think it's a great book for those kinds of conversations for sure i learned a lot reading this the next one i read is skunk and badger by amy timberlake and the illustrations are by john Classen. i listened to this one mostly and it was really fun i don't have that much to say about it because it's just a short kids book chapter book for younger readers and it focuses on unlikely friends basically and they end up being roommates one of them doesn't want to be roommates and then over time understands that it is fun to have a roommate it was really sweet in those moments badger is really into rocks and the audiobook narrator was really funny about these moments and would like scream rock scientist and like rock tumbler and just the intonation of that was really humorous to me i would recommend i gave it four stars and i thought that it was quite fun and silly the one i read after that was a graphic novel and it's witches of brooklyn by sophie escabase this is a lovely delightful heartwarming rewarding graphic novel about witches the main character um effie ends up with two aunts she is kind of in foster care and ends up with her aunts finding out about her aunts being witches and then she's gonna gain some powers and become a witch too and what does she want to use her powers for for good um for evil you know for things in between and it's also about her um getting to know friends at school developing friendships it also has to do with conversations about being a fan of someone really famous and when that famous person lets you down. It was really satisfying. It was heartwarming. I really loved the relationships between the aunts and Effie. I felt like I was being wrapped in a hug as I was reading this and I definitely would recommend this. It was lovely. I gave it four and a half stars and I'm so excited that there's going to be another one in the series. And then last but not least, the last thing that I read was Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Ostman. I've been really excited about this one. They're coming out really slowly in the US. We only have Volume 2 so far. This was really cute and mostly focuses on Nick's coming out, telling his family and his friends about it, kind of the conversations that you have as a boy who's not out yet with a boy who is out, and also just really fun, sweet love story that continues in this book. They are really sweet together, and I read this for a pick-me-up. I don't think that this book surprised me as much as Volume 1 did in how their relationship developed. A lot of this was a little bit more predictable than in Volume 1, but I still really liked it and I gave it four stars. And that is it for all of the books that I read in January. If you've read any of these or would like to read any of these, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching my video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.